multimedia personality, comedic commentator, songwriter, recording artist, spiritual leader, author, and actor. Larry D. Reed is the founder of the MBN Network, owner of LDR Enterprises based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and the spiritual leader of the Reformation Church of Atlanta. You can catch Larry Reed on the BET Plus original series, Kingdom Business, and on American Gangsta Track Queens. Streaming online at BET.plus. Church Critic by Dr. Larry D. Reed. An examination of the Larry Reed Live show perspective. Purchase a copy today by logging on to LarryReadLive.com. That's LarryReadLive.com. Stay connected to Larry Reed Live. Take a moment and like the Facebook page, subscribe to the YouTube page and hit the bell. Text LRL to 404-999-7527. That's the words LRL to 404-999-7527. And get notified when we go live. Become a member of Patreon. Log on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Sign up, then download the Patreon app and turn on your notifications. Get connected today. We're about to have a conversation. Good morning, West Coast. Hey, how are you? And good afternoon, early afternoon to the East Coast and all of you around about the world. I just came off of IG and IG Live that I have to share with each and every one of you. And I'm about to play it, but I'll be in the chat. But it is the result of a video that came out that Donna McClurkin um, was on a particular show and he talked about sexuality, his sexuality. And as a result, I began to have a conversation on IG that I know would have never had on the show, although it would have been a great idea. And I think I did have that idea like a year or two ago. But anyway, it sort of happened. Um, And then we planned another show. It's going to be a great conversation. But this hour and 20 minute conversation, go, go, go get you a snack. This hour and 20 minute conversation was extremely riveting to me because you watched me have two aha moments and some things I never thought about. But first, let's look at the Donna McClurkin video right after that. We'll go into the live. All right, let's go. I didn't know how to have the relationship. Uh huh. I didn't know really what a woman wanted. Hmm. I've messed up more than I've, than I've had good. My past relationships were a sprinkling of everything. Men and women. Men and women. I don't know how to do this. And because of that, yeah. when things get rough, I go back into my safe place. Work. My music and my ministry. Work. I want to lay down next to somebody that's going to be with me for the rest of my life. I really do. I miss the fact that I did not have the family unit that I could lay next to my spouse with my baby on my chest and be the quintessential dad that raises up a family like I saw in my dreams and I wanted in my heart. Mm, Straight man. So never having a long term relationship in my life Mm. and never being married. My thing is I chalked that up. I'm going to probably be alone for the rest of my life as far as a mate is concerned. Mm. Happiness is something that's relative. I've got joy. Joy is consistent. A terribly interesting conversation that I just had with someone that prompted me to come up here and just talk a little bit. Hello to all of you that are watching on IG. Those of you that are watching the playback on YouTube and Facebook, engage in the comment section. And I don't know why 
I'm having connection issues, but um, let me just talk about this for a little while. Hopefully, I'll be able to get through this without too many interruptions that are signal related. Um, oh, where to start? Hmm. Donald McClurkin's video created some interesting conversation in the comments. And the great thing about videos like that, it make it to where we can have conversations we don't normally have. And I hope that the black community and the church, particularly the church, is paying their attention to how these conversations are coming up on social media, on these other shows. And it's really conversation that we should be having in the black community, particularly in the church called the black church has shaped a lot of the black community and black culture and black belief system, black um, tolerance and intolerance. And man, it's very interesting. So the question that was asked was about what well, the conversation consists of so many things, but one of the things that came to my mind as a question is Are we as a community open to people who cannot be labeled either because of lack of education or because of the complexity of their sexuality? Um, and whenever you're having a uh, conversation on sexuality, if it's a proper and appropriate conversation, it's also a conversation about spirituality because at the center of spirituality is humanity. And sexuality is one of the legs of humanity. And it's not been discussed, in my opinion. I think certain communities are having the conversation, but not the mongrel masses. And we need to have the conversation. Donna McClurkin doesn't identify as a gay man. Donna McClurkin identifies as an ex-gay. Um, that's really where it gets a little confusing for a lot of people because he's saying I'm ex-gay, but at the same time, he's still saying he's same sex attracted. He gets that right to do that. And though it's confusing to those of us on the outside, I think I understand it because I'm 46 years old. And I've been pastoring since I was um, 19. And, yeah, that's right. Count them years up. I've seen everything. <laughs> there ain't nothing I've ever seen. Someone said, Larry, you look relaxed. That's insightful. I slept longer last night than I have in a long time. Yeah, you know, anybody that really knows me know I have basically a, a lifelong case of insomnia. But um, I slept last night for like seven hours. So... Everything looking fresh. It can be confusing for those of us on the outside, but y'all, sexuality is complex. Can you put that in the chat? Sexuality is complex. There's no need to try to label people and put people in categories when it's not your own sexuality that you are defining and discussing. You have to listen to what somebody else says they are and honor that. Um, even if you don't understand it, being courteous and respectful is to acknowledge people the way that they acknowledge themselves and not to slander them or say call them something derogatory. And I think that's only human to do. It's, it's very, very complex. Somebody say, what happened? You have to watch the Donna McClurkin video. Now, it's a two or three year old video, but it's coming back up again and it's creating a conversation. And the problem that people have with Donna McClurkin is that he says he's ex-gay, but at the same time saying that there's still that attraction to men. Oh, those are the same things. What I'm about to say, many of you are, are not going to agree with. I know because I've been saying it for 20 years that there's always this issue around what I'm saying. So I said, how is sexuality complex? Great question. I'm about to tell you how. Because... A lot of people think that if 
a man or a woman says that I enjoy same sex activities. That's a Larry Live word. Erica, if you watch it, make sure that sex activities is in the um in the last trademark thing. Um because that's made up by me. Like all the rest of them words. Sex activities. Um, that if I enjoy same sex activities on any level or at any time, maybe even one time in my life, then I am gay. Well, it's not that simple. And it that of course, a lot of times when we like to simplify and oversimplify stuff, and sexuality is complex, and that's just not the truth. I know people who have sat right across from me in council who are straight women. And I know they're straight. They they strictly, but while they were locked up in prison, someone said, "I'm not gonna answer that." That's absurd to even ask. And why would it even be your business? No, I, I only know Donna McClurkin from on the outside. And if you don't want to get blocked, don't come in here saying nothing stupid because you won't end up getting blocked. I don't know. Donna McClurkin intimately, aside from sitting down two feet from each other talking. Um, but that's, that's not the point of the conversation. Um, see, what the hell was I saying? Uh, yeah. Sitting across from, sitting across from a female who I know like men. But while she was in prison or in a situation, she enjoyed, on some level, same-sex activities. You, mo a lot of people, especially those over 40, 45, are going to say, okay, she's gay. And that's just not how that works. or around the corner or on a app or in a back alley or in a park. Okay, I'm having a problem. Um can y'all hear All right, are we back? All right. Let's go. Enjoy same sex timbers in the back seat of a car. This will be somebody deep. Um but that's, that's not the point of the conversation. Um, see, what the hell was I saying? Uh, yeah. Sitting across from sitting across from a female who I know like men, but while she was in prison or in a situation, she enjoyed. On some level, same sex activities. You, mo a lot of people, especially those over 40, 45, are gonna say, okay, she's gay. And that's just not how that works. That's an oversimplification. In some instances, that is the case. You're dealing with somebody who cannot embrace the full spectrum of who they are. Um, and so at night or around the corner or on an app or in a back alley or in a park, they enjoy same sex tippers in the back seat of a car. This would be somebody DL or closeted who is satisfying their sexual appetite in a pretty unsafe and appropriate way. That could be a closeted gay person. But that's not always the case. It can just be someone who shared a moment with a close female friend and there's an emotional connection and so they begin to explore each other. But that person gets up from that experience and when they see other men, I mean see other women, we're talking about a female now, when they see other women, they don't even look at their chest meat. They don't look at the shape of their hips. 
I mean, they just appreciate how women appreciate each other's beauty. Oh, she's beautiful. She has a nice body. She has a nice breast. But not in a in a sense to where there's some kind of sexual um, innuendo there. It's just an appreciation. So that's not a gay woman. That woman is not gay. That woman has a relationship with one or more women. And because of the relationship, then she feels open to explore all of what that relationship brings her. See, for me, I've seen that with women and I've seen that with men. And when I tell you, these people, they, their mind don't operate like a gay person. They, they don't move like a gay person. They don't see the same sex like a gay person does. They're not gay. On top of that, they do not connect with the same sex emotionally the way that they connect with the opposite sex. That's not a gay person. You can't just look at the sex and define a woman by who she has sex with. You have to also consider who she emotionally connects with. All of that determines somebody's sexuality. Donna McClurkin, it sounds like to me that he needs the opportunity to explore who he is. Now, church people put the Bible over here to the side. Let's just have the conversation. What I'm saying is just like when a child grows up and you have to teach them that the fire is hot. You have to teach them that the lake is dangerous. You have to teach them that don't put your hand in the dog's mouth. These experiences educate the child about life, safety, themselves. Sexuality, I think, should have that same kind of approach to allow people to educate themselves through experience versus, especially when you're raised in Christianity and the church, putting them in a box and telling them what they must do and be. Because what a few things you do, but one of the things that's probably going to happen is that person is going to be forced to be sneaky and unsafe when they explore that side and they keep it in the box and they never get into wisdom of the sexuality to just do it almost like much like a crackhead will run and get high right quick and then run back to their regular life um that's a disservice i think it plays a huge part to stds that we see in the black community i think it plays a huge part to HIV rate in the black community because we won't have the conversation. I think it plays a huge part to single moms with several different children and several different baby daddies because we're not having the sexuality conversation. And then the shame that comes on a woman, um, I get to the man thing, I think, but the conversation started all this. The, um, that comes on a woman when she gets pregnant out of wedlock and then how the church treat her. All of that's the sexuality conversation. And Donna McClurkin's video is allowing us to have that conversation. If he hadn't done that video, I wouldn't be up here talking about this right now. I wouldn't have been having the conversation earlier today with who I was talking to. It just wouldn't have been happening. So somebody said the institutional, institutional church is wet. See, that's, the institution. that's what Ty Tribble was talking about. It's really not serving us well anymore. So we need to reform it so that it's in a form that is more profitable for all of us and for everybody. I um I know I don't I don't like that. And y'all know Donna Clark can get on my last nerve. Y'all know our face to face experience and all of that. And not dealings. He get on my last nerve. I love his gift and his ministry, but I don't like him. I don't hate him. I just don't like him from what I've experienced. He may have changed since then. Please understand. He may have changed since then. And I'm very optimistic. If you go back to when I had two other panelists on the Larry Live show, you remember I stuck up for him as it relates to them. And that video still should be out there. But so I'm not biased. And and what in the conversation I'm I'm, ha I'm having with him, um, concerning him, but I want to be very clear I don't like him. So with me, if I'm able to, 
If I'm able to say I don't like Donna McClurkin, but am still empathetic and understanding, then that'll let you know I'm able to do that with, with any darn body. So I say, why don't you like them? I might get into it, I might not, before I get off the line. But it's in the past, it's water up on the bridge. Now, let's talk to, uh, flip it to the man. Now, the man that enjoys fellatio, oral sex, possibly even anal sex, with another man, we automatically call them gay. I, I don't know if y'all, it, it ain't proper. You just can't do it. I mean, you, you you just can't do it. You can, but it's just not proper. You have to have a conversation with that person to find out how they identify. Do some people, are they living down low and they have identity crisis and they really ain't ready to embrace who they are? Yeah. I think that's why some people say, no, you, just, you gay, you just don't know it, you know. But the reality is, aside from that, you really don't know. You have to have, how do they identify? Y'all know T.S. Madison's taught me a lot. And um, when I first met her in 18, she was really the beginning of a deeper search into sexuality. I hadn't asked a lot of questions prior. Um, I had my own personal beliefs. And then I went into books, and so here we are. <clears throat> um... I mean, I read books prior, but I just didn't go deep into it till after meeting her because she changed me. And let me tell you how. Because um, married to the only woman that I have, well, I can't say the only woman I love, but I'm going to say the only woman I fell in love with is my baby mama. And I'm married to her for 18 years. And that's really the only woman I've been, have been around at that point. Because I just got divorced the year before, months prior. And in 17, although we broke up in 16. And so, I had watched T.S. Madison online, who is female presenting. I knew she still had a penis, and a peen, rather. But when I got around her, I forgot. I totally forget. Somebody said, what is effeminate in the Bible? Let's get to that. Um... Y'all remember, help me remember that. I totally forgot. I totally forgot. My hand to God. Because T.S. Madison has lived as a woman so long that there is absolutely no difference between her. We talking about the air around her, the energy around her, in her house, and everything. It's a mama them. Or like my sister them. Or like any other woman that you meet. And so when I got up around her, I had to keep, wait a minute, Larry, this is not a biological woman. She, it, I just thought she, she was. I mean, in my mind, and I, my everything, I was entreating her and dealing with her like I would a woman. And I said, wow. So that was the beginning of me understanding some things about sexuality and even just what sexuality is to me and how I, how I look at mine and, and what, because in that moment I realized, oh, this is why I make the statement I made. When you see a trans woman walking by as a man and that woman, that trans woman looks like a biological woman, your manhood, if you like women, I see that's the key. <laughs> if you like women is going to identify with that as a man does with the woman. You are. I can tell. I can tell by the energy. Okay, you keep thinking that. Maybe the trans women in your area. But go to San Fran, L.A., Thailand, overseas, where they ain't got no Adam's apple. Their hands are small, and everything look like feet small. Voice sounds just like a woman. No hair, nowhere. You, you're going to say, wait a minute now. What's going on with me? And that's what happened with, <laughs> with T.S. Madison. So I, say, I honestly never heard of her, but when I looked her up, I was about to cry because, honey, sorry, that me is something we are looking for. Sorry, but true. Oh, okay. Well, see, that's, a, that's another conversation. That is also this conversation. Okay. I was talking with someone who, for lack of better words, is a sex worker. And they're bisexual. It's a man. And they have sex with trans women regularly. Now, I don't know if y'all know this. There's a whole crew 
of trans women. I mean, trans men. What did I say earlier? It was trans trans men who are born female, but they are male presenting. And he said he enjoys it, and he enjoys the the puss. Now you know the puss is the most powerful thing on the face of the earth. Uh, and I said, well, if you're able to have sex with a female, although this is a trans male, with a female, then my question is, are you gay? And you're like, well, no, I'm not. I'm bisexual. I said, well, who do? Can you emotionally connect with a woman like you do a man? And at first, his answer was, well, no. I said, well, then you, you're gay, in my in my opinion. He said, hold on, hold on. I did have a serious relationship. Yeah, I I can. And when I was with her, I was not with, with men. I said, okay, you're authentically bisexual. Because for me, bisexual is not just your ability to have sex with the same sex and the opposite sex, but it also has to do with your emotional capacity. See, if a man loves sleeping with women, love puss, if you search his his search engine, it's all women. But that same man enjoys some kind of sexual pleasure with the same sex, not just with some random person or maybe, but especially somebody they're connected to, then that don't mean that person is bi. Or he may not be able to connect with that man fully the way he connect with the with the woman. This could be just someone who is a straight man who just enjoys same sex activities. And y'all, that's a reality. I know to you, you can say in your mind where well, that man is gay, but okay, that's fine. But that's not the reality. How do they identify? Some could be, but not that one, because everybody's different, and your sexuality is just as unique as your fingerprint. And so you have to have a conversation and you then you have to respect people for who they say they are. It's terribly interesting um, to just see the behavior and the conversation around sexuality, especially in the black community and the lack of education and the lack of openness to be educated and to have a conversation. So let me ask you this. A woman that has sex with with more than one man at a time is she a a a harlot or not let me see y'all y'all questions i mean y'all answers is she is she a harlot or not in your opinion be honest if a woman is having sex and this will be very interesting answers if a woman is having sex with more than one man is she a harlot or not God's wife said yes. Naida said it depends. Nita one says yes. <laughs> I'm saying a long yes. Mel the messenger says no. Straight off the run runway says no. Lizzie says yes. Somebody says she is not if she's single. Look at all these different ways of thinking about this. Yes. Yes. No. No, she just have friendly puss. <laughs> J. Ross says no. Catherine says no. I, I, this, oh, I, I am to one. Now, we've had great conversations around sex. If, if you hit the, this button, this, this live might go a whole nother way. Okay, so check this out. In most people's opinion in the South, you ask a woman, if a woman is having sex with more than one man at one time, she is absolutely a hoe. But that's not the case. We're in a different, thank you, baby. We're in a whole different space, you guys. And I ain't ashamed to say I thought that. I thought if, someone said, Blair, please save this live. I will. I thought if a woman is having sex with more than one person at one time, she is a whore. I don't believe that anymore. Because I've seen a very smart, wise, what I would believe to be a good woman who has more than one sexual partner. She's single and she's mingling. Ooh, if Tawan come in here. I'm going to hit this Tawan when I get to the man part. Um, she's single 
smart woman, but she's just mingling and she's getting to know herself. With these three men, she has a relationship with these three men. They're not exclusive, but she has a relationship with these three men. She knows these men. It's not that she's some random, just having sex with some random person. She knows these three men. Good question, Kendall. Would the man be a whore that is having sex with three women? We we don't we we'll say oh he's been a man. Somebody else said men do it all the time. Somebody said if she's getting paid then she's a sex worker. What's wrong with being a sex worker? You just don't like sex work. You don't want to be with somebody who's doing sex work. I agree with that. I I I wouldn't want if I had to choose. I wouldn't want to be with somebody who's a sex worker. But what if you meet somebody and connect with them, then find out they're a sex worker? <laughs> That's a whole nother situation. So no, I don't believe that woman that has three sex partners is she's exploring herself in these relationships. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. Now, if she is just having sex every week with random different people, and this is a way of life, I might I might will start having some some different emotions concerning that. But who knows? Three years from now, I might could understand in a different way because we we on we we can read a book, but we learn from talking to each other. The more we talk to each other, the more we learn. And this is how come I can hear Donna McClurkin say, "I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know I don't know how to have a relationship with a woman." I understand that. I I get that. I understand as much as it's possible for me to understand it. So let me say it like that. But I hear what you said and I believe what you said. I believe that. And I also believe that you want deeply to have a family and you want to be accepted as you are. And you want to be straight. But you're not. And you feel like that you can't enjoy relationship with the man. Well, see, this is how I think. I much rather see Don McClurkin with one man than for him to be satisfying and scratching that itch in an inappropriate way with someone that can cause him to lose it all, risk it all, because that come out. Well, I want to know. We probably won't even care if that come out with Donald Cliff because he done told us so much. But I'm just saying, I'm, I'd rather see him happy. I wonder what a happy Donald McClurkin will look like because clearly, clearly he's not. Larry Black bodies have been sexualized since slavery, and our understanding of sexuality is seen through the eyes and understanding of our own Western. Amen. True. Let's see what um is Tawan. If Tawan hit this, this is about to, this is about to get terribly interesting. <laughs> He's hitting it. Oh my God. <laughs> Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, first of all, before I ask you some questions, tell everybody who is watching who you are, whatever you want to say, and what and what. All right. So my name is I am the one on Instagram. Um, I am a personal trainer slash um. Male exotic dancer, um, slash, couple of other jobs, but um, yeah, I'm in the whole sex, I guess, field or whatever, you know. Okay. So let so let me ask you this. In your opinion, because you 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 know trans men, trans women, you know gay men and gay women, you know everybody. Mm -hmm. And you've seen, seen every kind of sexual desire, in your opinion. Mm -hmm. A man or woman sleeps with the same sex. Are they always gay? Not necessarily. Not all not always. Um is is so many umbrellas that they can fall up under. Um the LGBTQ umbrella is big now um but from me coming up i only knew gay gay straight bisexual 
pansexual. That's all I knew. Um, but um, when it comes down to if he sleep with a guy, but he's still really attracted to a girl, I feel like he's bisexual because, you know, if, if he sleep with him one time, if he constantly sleep with a guy, then he's bisexual. I'm interested attracted to a girl, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, when it comes down to it, with a guy and a girl, um, it's, it's just, it's, it, it's that connection. If you have that connection with a guy or whatever, and then you just don't have that connection with a girl, then yeah, you're gay. You're, with him, you're gay. But if you kind of have that mutual respect and, you know, kind of like balance and stuff like that, that's a bisexual person. I agree with that. And, and I, I think I think I was reading a study an article, and it basically said that bisexuality is even more rare. No, no, no. That gay is more rare than bisexuality, and that bisexuality is actually the, the biggest group. Mm -hmm. I believe that. I believe it, too. I believe it, too. But when it comes down to it, um, I think more so is a... It's a line of how people view people. Um, it's more so like, say for instance, if a female comes out as, oh, I sleep with females, you know, and I sleep with males and stuff like that, society would be like, oh, okay, you know, you know, it's okay, you know, stuff like that or whatever. Even people in the church, they really don't care about females sleeping with females and stuff like that or whatever, even though they say, quote unquote, oh, it's a sin, you shouldn't be doing it and stuff like that or whatever, stuff like that, but they don't beat it down as much as they will beat down a male. If, if, if society found out a male is gay or he even slept with a guy or even got his, got some head by a guy or whatever, um, society will like basically deem him and tear him down. You, you get what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. I will have the community. The black the post the other day, I think was a heart rate. Some preacher said, no, what was it Spencer? Yeah. You know, Spencer. Some, that I saw it on somebody's live. They said a straight male in the church can get away with everything, anything except being gay. Except being gay. That's unfortunate. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's why Donna McClurkin is so, in my opinion, tormented conflicted because in the church world he hear all the time that that is the worst thing that he could ever be mm -hmm. yeah so, i mean and even in the church world it's like that is like the, the the being gay or you know they don't even look at by they don't even say bi or anything they don't even say you know any kind of other label, they just say gay. If you're gay in the church, they deem that as the worst sin in, a, in in the Bible or whatever. Basically, when all sins are same level or whatever. Um, but uh, when it comes to okay, so I'm put me in the equation. I I'm a type of person where I don't look at myself. I try not to label myself, but I have to label myself when it comes down to having a conversation. So me and you've had several conversations in the past before about, you know, different things. Stuff. And I try to not to label myself, but I have to label myself when I'm in a conversation because I do have sex with men and I'm attracted to men, but I do have sex with trans men, women, you know, cause I'm attracted to it. And it's not sex wise, just the sex. Cause mm -hmm. see, a lot of people get sex and sexuality confused. That's where the whole confusion come in. When you get sex and sexuality confused, I'm attracted to women. I'm attracted like when I see a girl, a, a, a female, I don't just want to do the hair. I don't know how to do hair, so <laughs> I'm not just trying. I'm oh man, he got knocked off. Wow, he said he just don't want. I think that's important because I've seen a lot of church closeted men with wives in a conversation with them, I can tell pretty quickly. I said, oh, your attraction towards women is cause them, their heels, how their legs look in heels, how 
they look in hats and how they dress you you're enamored with the femininity but that's not sexual attraction and i see that a lot in church men and they'll get married to these women they'll have sex with these women because they they actually have sexualized femininity but their attraction towards women isn't like a hetero sexual will be attracted to a woman or a bisexual man will be attracted to a woman yeah oh <sighs> y'all this this is a conversation that we can continually have over and over but it was just on my head because the conversation was so good and intriguing i just want us to to think more about this that as unique as our fingerprint is it's as you unique as as someone's sexuality some people's sexuality is cut and dry black and white I like men or I like women or I like both. Um, then now, nowadays, get, I like men that present as women and women that present as men. You know, it just gets, it's so unique and it's so vast. And um, it's terribly interesting. I like what Tawan said. He said for him that he knows he's bisexual. And I will probably take what he is saying the same way I would an expert because he he lives in that world. Um, what world? Meaning he gets to experience firsthand human sexuality without secrets, without any um, shame, without any lying. Oh, that's, that's, what if we could do that in the black community across the board or in the church? Wow. I think then we could have a conversation like, you know, some of these marriages in the church, they're not regular marriages. They, they're open. And some of these pastors, their first ladies are giving them permission to explore. But when it comes out, she don't say nothing because she can't let it be known. Oh, we, we define our own marriage. We didn't define our marriage according to the culture or the way that y'all feel like the Bible says it. Our, our marriage is more complex. And we can have them kind of conversations, y'all. I just think that'd be good. Now you get to choose what you lay down with. You get to choose how you want to sit within yourself and in your partnership and in your covenant or in your marriage. But, um, at least be open to a conversation or education of what is happening in our world. And everybody ain't that can't be labeled. Like he just said to one that said, you know, if he had to choose a label, it would be bisexual. And I think the labels are okay because it gives us some starting point to begin to define and understand some things. But we, there's there's a there's a world that we are in that is showing up quickly that it transcends those labels. We start out with the labels. It's almost like with spirituality, you start with the foundation. You know, Jesus is God, God is Jesus, but Jesus is the Son of God. That means they're in the same material and the Holy Spirit is all one. You know, then we find out about prayer, then we find out about the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, then prophecy, then healing and miracles, and for you know what we you know, I, so I think the labels is foundational, and I think it's good. But we're about to transcend that, and I don't know if y'all know that. Aquarian energy, because Pluto has went into Aquarius, Aquarian energy is in the world. And this started some years ago, but we're in it now. I want you to type Aquarian like this, A-Q-E-E-R-I-A-N. Aquarian. See, a queer or to be queer means to be different. Do y'all know that everything, even our money, our government, the way actors are paid and the way musicians make money now is through streaming and not as much, you're still through live shows, you know, but not album sales, it's single sales. Everything has been queered and everything is being queered. What do you mean different? 
anybody that is different is queer. Anybody that is exceptional is queer. I wrote a poem many years ago called We Are All Gay. It's online still. And basically what I was saying is everybody's different. And the more different you are, the more gay you are or the more queer you are. Because when we first started using the word gay in our community, it meant different. And being gay, different, in light of being different, is a good thing because it means that you get to create an experience and be an experience and have an experience that is different than everybody else's. And I don't know about you. I'm determined to have an experience that is different than everybody that came before me. And I'm determined to have an experience and to create an experience and to live an experience that's different than everybody before me. So in light of that, we are all gay. In light of that, we are all striving to be as queer as possible. Because the more queer you are, the more unique, exquisite, you have a niche. And you can monetize in that niche. You know, so the Aquarian energy is actually the queering of our entire world. Now, I know what I'm saying may go over some of you here, but somebody going to get what the hell I'm saying. And I'm pretty sure those that I teach understand what I'm saying. Because as an entrepreneur, you must be as queer as possible to find your audience and your niche market and then monetize there, build there, and then expand there, scale there, and get into your millions. Are y'all getting what, I, what I'm saying? All of this conversation is coming from Donnie McClurkin because he was honest in an interview. Hats off to Donnie McClurkin for being honest. To so some people, it, it was confusing. So somebody says, so are you saying being gay is not a sin? I don't see how that fits with this conversation. I think that's another conversation. Um, you know, a lot of times when I start discussing certain things, questions come in people's mind that's actually com coming from, and I'm not trying to be rude, it actually comes from the cognitive dissonance that happens as a result of something I said triggering you. And then you just go into hearing things and questioning things that ain't even on top and ain't got nothing to do with what I'm saying and it's just so off. Um, I think that's another conversation. Acquiring anything different. I'm hearing you. I see it. It's real truth. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. Tawan is in the chat. Oh, he's back in the chat. Maybe I need to bring him on to have a sip, have a more deeper conversation. Because I, what y'all think about that? I, I need some, a fee, uh, he's a male in that field. I need a female in that field and then a trans person in that field and have a whole, whole panel. I get them over here to, to the studio and have a whole panel. Probably a conversation we have in Patreon because I want the comment section filtered up with foolishness. And another thing I don't want to do is like some of the people in here ask, asking personal questions as much to the people I have, including myself. I don't think that's none of your business unless one of us wants to share something. Other than that, mind your own damn business, motherfucker. Dow, Jeremy, you're not supposed to be up here on this. You just come up at the wrong time. <laughs> Can we hear the rest of what he's saying, please? Okay, let's see if he's in the chat. I mean, the one. Oh, there he is. Um, I'm going to tell him to, when I'm talking for him, to mute. And when he's talking, I'm going to mute. Okay, so when when you, oh, you got headphones in. This should fix it. No, that's better. Oh, let's check with the chat and see if it's fixed. All right, y'all, is it, is it fixed now? Is it better? Y'all hear I me? Can, I could hear you well on my end. Thumbs up if you could. Yeah, they're going to let us know. Yes, now here I see a yes. Perfect. Oh, okay, they say perfect. Okay. Somebody said, yeah, and Patreon is more elevated. Yeah. I might bring you over to my Patreon. Um, Tawan, do you know I need someone like you because you identify as bisexual? I need mm -hmm. a trans person that does in the same work and then a female that's in the same work to have like, the same work. a panel discussion. 
I, I would fly out here to do it in my big studio and with, a few, with my audience of any of my patrons around here and just have that kind of conversation. Yeah, so um, I definitely know, I know like, I know a couple of people um, in Atlanta actually already. So you won't have to fly. And I'm, I'm the only one that's not in Atlanta. But um, I know a couple of people in Atlanta that will actually come up and have that conversation because we actually have conversations like that all the time, personally. Um, now, so, we'll yeah. Nothing before you got, before you got, before it um, cut off. Can you pick up on where you want that? So basically, I was saying that um, me being in the industry, um, once again, people, I am in the industry when it comes down to the sex work. Um, it's called the escorting. That sounds escorting. Up. Escorting. Um, escorting. Uh, the whole the whole nine yards when it comes down to that. Um, I encounter many people, and when I say escorting, escorting is not just sex. Um, it's not just having sex and just having sex with random folks and stuff like that. Escorting is most of my dates are going to sit down and have conversation with people. Talk, you know, going out on dates with people and stuff like that or whatever. You know, I rarely have sex, you know, in but that, I, you know, well, you level know, I, or whatever. I, I, but my idea, and I got this wrote down, and there are people who are not with me now who knows this. I had an idea to do a companion app. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do not understand that companionship and attachment is engagement is like so that's the world between the, the world that precedes sex and mm -hmm. a lot of people just want that they just mm -hmm. want that connection and i wanted to do an app where people could purchase time with certain people to just enjoy life now i wouldn't be in, i mean what people do on the grown folk do ain't my business but mm -hmm. i want to I wanted to provide provide that, and if I ever do that, I'm so gonna ask you to do be a part. I think it's got to be the right kind of people, you know, because I I I want to do that because I know a lot of people who are just lonely, who wants the presence of someone, or people who just don't have time. They need to be able to hit a button when they want to be with somebody. They need to be able to hit a button to come go to the movies with me. Come go, mm -hmm. me. come fly to LA. Come fly to Thailand with me. And it ain't sex. Yeah. It's just yeah. companionship. So as an escort, you have to provide that service too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that 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 um that's a lot of the 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 jobs that happen in that field. Um a lot of people just and it's not that they can't get nobody, it's the fact that the convenience of it, like, oh I just you know, I don't want to go through the whole I got to get to know your phase and I got to go through all this phase and stuff like that, whatever. They just want the convenience of it or whatever. So, um, but that's me. That's me. Um, not in a nutshell, because I go further from that. I got a lot of other, you know, jobs, but oh, we're yeah. talking about. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know if y'all follow my story. This this man can do 159 different things. <laughs> Aside from what he mentioned, if you follow him on TikTok, he got a D, do it yourself. DIY King 06. And you own a gym in Savannah. Yeah. yeah, you can do a whole lot of different things. Okay, okay so go ahead. But back to the conversation where we're talking about sex and sexuality. A lot of people don't understand that, yeah, having sex with somebody doesn't mean that, you know, that's your sexuality or whatever. Um, Pow. Sex what? Pow. Did y'all hear that? Let me see that. Did y'all hear what he said? I believe I, I'm on the same team with you with that. How you have, we talking about sex and sexuality, not sex as far as you're born male, female, but sex that act versus sexuality, that they are not the same. Same, they're not the same. They're two different, they're two different avenues with that. Um, when it comes down to it, having sex with somebody, I can have sex, you can go out and have sex with nine million people. That don't mean you actually attracted to that person or whatever. You know, you attracted to like you know. I can just be getting my my getting that off, and that's it or whatever. Because nine times out of ten, a lot of times people are having sex and they feel like okay, that's just me or whatever. No, you're bisexual or you're straight or you're gay. Mm -hmm. Um, or, or that and, and, and or pain, but that that's just me now. When that come out of my mouth, it doesn't. After it come out of my off my lips, it don't mean shit. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I don't mean to cuss, <laughs> but 
<laughs> you know, but that's how that's how I view that's how I view things. And um, like I said, I don't put a label on myself, but when I'm talking to someone or having a conversation with somebody, I put I have to actually put a label and say, Hey, this is what I do, stuff like that, because I don't want to get the the next person confused. Right. It's so, a teachable so, so you use the label when you for the purpose of teaching, which I yeah, think for the purpose of teaching is good to understand Melba Moore um, made a comment concerning my app that I want to do she says stop and shop companionship absolutely Love. I've been wanting to do this for a while I've been and when I tell you I've been and if Kendall is in here or Shamako I have been talking about this since 2016 mm -hmm. I wanted to do I actually interviewed a couple of people to get it started but then I got more focused on Larry Reed Live and um, and the ministry aspect but that's really something I want to do because I want to, I, I've seen a lot of women and men do a lot of stupid stuff just because they want it not to be by themselves. Mm -hmm. they, they want the sex. They just want they to be want the companionship and, and the companionship and the feeling or illusion of attachment for the weekend. Mm -hmm. For the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and a lot of times that's the, all they have time for um when it comes down to that that's all they really have time for it's like okay my job i got this and you know a lot of stuff going on but when it comes down to it or whatever i still need that and when they have that for the weekend that satisfied them and it's cool or whatever um and that come back to satis satisfying someone um back to sex and sex what's up um do in your opinion, have, have you ever had sex with a man that, in your opinion, was straight? Um, several times, yeah, yeah. Now, make make that make sense to us. But okay, I, so I, I understand it, but there's somebody watching who don't understand. So, um, when I have I, the the guy that I had sex with or whatever, um, I can tell it just was sex from gate it's opening or whatever i can tell it just was i'm trying to and it, and and i'm gonna tell you about this one person that i know he was just experimenting mm -hmm. he wanted to see if that that is what he liked um and he enjoyed the time and everything that we did together or whatever by curious yes he he enjoyed it mm -hmm. um of course i'm a good time anyway but <laughs> um <laughs> He enjoyed it. He definitely enjoyed it. But he all he came. We had the conversation afterwards, and he basically said, "This is not for him. It wasn't for him." I have a lot to say about that. I have a lot to say about that. Because, in my opinion, and I have said this for years, you do not know who you really are. And I know you guys can argue with. That's fine. Just my opinion. I don't think you know who you really are until you try. It's almost like saying you hate eating that without ever tasting it. Right. Have you ever told you don't like it? I think that's important to do. And and this is the reason why I tell my daughters, because my youngest daughter, when the whole, the whole time coming up, I'm a lesbian, I'm a lesbian, I'm a lesbian. You know, I like girls, I like girls. Now, this year, she's putting on fingernails, getting eyelashes, and doing her hair and stuff because she likes some more. You know, mm -hmm. and then boy then came over here and and I ain't gonna tell all the bitches. Yeah, don't <laughs> but the point but the point is, wait a minute, I thought you was and I had told Kalisa like, no, no game. You gonna put on this dress and you're gonna quit just like the boy. And I was saying, Lisa, just let her do whatever it is and then she'll figure out what she like. Cause now Lisa's excited because <laughs> she also oh, having to go to the eyelashes and fingernails with her like she do with her oldest daughter. But I'm saying, but now she's exploring. I I think as parents, we should let our kids explore. I know that's opposite of what the Bible says as far as what we call, what we believe fornication is sex before marriage. But that's really a whole nother conversation because that ain't mm -hmm. primarily or, or totally what it is. Um, but, because really fornication speaks to promiscuity. But, um, I think we should so that people can know. I agree with you. You said this man, he explored with you, and then he said, okay, although I enjoyed it, it's just- I really enjoyed it. 
it's just not for me. It's not for me. And 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 I and I, I accept that and respect that. So um anybody that know me that know what I do and stuff like that or even experience with me, they already know that I am a lot then. I don't whatever we do, that's us, you know, I don't say anything about it. I can see you in the streets and walk clean past you. You will get mad at me before I get mad at you for not speaking. Like everybody already know that. So from that situation, it was wait, a thing wait, where he wait, wait. I got a question. This this is a little off, but because of what you just said, but what we seen with Christian Keys, um, what's that girl name? Her and Diddy. Mm -hmm. Now guy and Diddy, the producer. Mm -hmm. And all we keep saying all these people who have had sex with people of prominence. Oh, the guy that the football player was his masseurs of 20 women can find out most of them are lying. But how how do you feel about the whole kiss and tell thing? Because you just said that you could see that person you just you just had a session with and out on the street and you act like they don't don't exist. So did you are you signing NDAs or this is just a part of your character? Um, I I've have I've signed NDAs before, but that's just a part of my character up front. Um, a lot of people I I instill that trust up front. Um, um, I basically, you know, I don't lie. I I mean, if I do, I I don't. I ain't even gonna say if I do. I don't lie. I let you know what's up, what's going on up front, how everything goes with me up front. Um, oh, for me, but I, I gotta acknowledge this. Member Moore says, "Say allegedly until proven." Allegedly, that's I pay attention. What Member Moore? That's one of my mo our moms on the platform. So we allegedly we have to listen. <laughs> allegedly, but when it comes down to people in their situations or their lives, I never, I would like I say, you would tell them yourself before I tell them you. And the only reason why I won't even say nothing about it, I'll still deny it or whatever. Um, but my thing is, you're business is your business um my business is my business and from that situation i'm that is it i don't tell i mean we can be in the same room with each other and i'm not a person where i would come out and just kind of like act different towards you or act different because you in a room like literally we if if we meeting each other and somebody be like oh here I go my friend we've met before that's going to be me I'm, our first I'm, time meeting having a thought and I hate to have this thought publicly because y'all just give me the permission or allow me. I don't need your permission, but allow me to think out loud because this is just how my Aquarian, Aquarian mind operates. Could it be that escorting sex work could be a ministry? Let, let me explain. Let me explain. This is a passing thought. <laughs> it's a passing thought. That's just the way my mind works. Because if a person does not know who they are, psychologically, mentally, emotionally, we go to a therapist. Instead of uh, escorting sex work, maybe it should be sexual therapy because some people need to go to a safe place to have an experience to to find out what they like and what they enjoy so then they can say what that man said to you i enjoyed this because i busted a nut but i see this isn't for me and now mm -hmm. he has identity he's clear on sex i have never had that thought in my life and you know how i feel about the <laughs> idea of sex you know? <laughs> but that is I've never had that thought and I'm gonna have to sit with it and think, is there a space and place for that? Because listen, in, in old African and Roman readings and writings, this is sort of the idea, I'm bringing it back to the Rome, with the altar boards, is that because it's not gay if it's oral, it's not gay, but if there is penetration, the, and the, or the child or the the young boy, it wants to have anal penetration and enjoy it. Then this person is is gay. But as far as everything else, it's exploring their sexuality 
something and that's something uh, like they had in place and it's like a rite of passage into your manhood now that's history I ain't made it up now you can google that and find out it's the truth okay um, i'm gonna so, google it so i wonder is there a space and place for someone who needs to go through sexual therapy can come to somebody office like yours and say i want to see how this feels mm -hmm. i want i want to do this and then pay you for that sexual therapy it's just a passing thought it's just a passing thought sexual therapy as a as a ministry and just a passing thought i just had the thought and maybe that's just my mind's way of getting open to the idea because i do and have looked down on the escorts and sex workers i sort of looked at them and and like as far as the relationship is concerned not as a person but as far okay. as the relationship is concerned like mm -mm, it ain't that's there's no way i could do that and, and, and okay, so answer this question: the the reason you look down the the reason what was the reasoning that you looked down on sex workers and stuff like sex workers or escorts? Because I'm because I'm possessive. So um, I don't know if it's possessive. But I I like exclusivity to me. Mm -hmm. so, so, and this has been very straightforward. Mm -hmm. And I may get judged for this. But most men, I might say most men, a lot of men think like this, whether they're pastor prophet. If I'm with you, 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 that's mine. It's not to be given to nobody else. Unless I say you can, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or, or, maybe I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I need, I don't know if I'm saying I need to be there to watch. I don't know if I'm saying I need to be there to participate. I'm saying, I just need to know what's what's really up and i feel like if you are an escort or you a sex worker or a sexual therapist as we're calling it in this conversation as i'm calling it in the conversation mm -hmm. i feel like you have to do stuff that's that's secretive that i can't know for the sake of your client and i don't like that <laughs> mm -hmm. so 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 and i'm I, I, so i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you this in the industry of escorting, um, nine times out of, I can say nine times out of ten is really not as far as like more sex wise, sex wise, penetration and stuff wise. Um, it's more the companionship and time you spending with the person. Um, that's what they really paid for. Um, because I can sit down and have a conversation with somebody for a whole forty five minutes. To almost an hour and they paying for about two or two or three hours or whatever i can have a whole conversation with them for almost like i say okay they said they pay for three hours and i can have a conversation with them for two hours and we just having stimulating conversation talking about you know what goes on in each other's lives and stuff like that or whatever and you know just listen sit down listening to them vent and stuff like that or whatever and then the last 20 30 minutes we have sex or whatever and so you're really paying for the conversation companionship the time that you're spending with the person mm -hmm. but um i lost that yeah you but that was your thought that you had to finish i got that it was a thought it, it, it was <laughs> but so with escorting escorting you really an escort is more so of i go there to do a job and I leave it there. Um, Do you get pleasure out of the sexual therapy or experience that you get? You're giving someone. So, of course, I do because I'm a cancer. So I'm always that person that's kind of like looking out for uh, the next person. Uh, I see. So you you like to so, comfort and give. Yeah. yeah okay. I'm, I'm always giving. I'm always, I'm always like, and that, and that's every cancer that I know. They always like caring and loving and giving and stuff like that and want to sit and listen and want to actually, you know, help, you know, stuff like that or whatever. And I'm not saying, okay, that's helping someone or whatever. And it could be help. It could, it could help them. But as an escort, I always 
say this. When I'm in a relationship, I've been in a relationship before and still doing this work. Um, I always make my partner comfortable. I always let him know, hey, this is what I'm going to do. Um, this is what they book for. You know, I try to like be really open to my partner um, and wow. for them to understand that, okay, when I go there and, and I'm single now, so I can enjoy the feelings and enjoy like you know stuff like that whatever. but when i'm with someone that all shuts off and i'm just going to do a job um i'm wow. going to make you feel and i'm going to and, and the thing about the crazy part about it i'm going to make my client feel like okay i'm there and that's all they need um it could be yeah 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 and that's what they need they need and and it's not a thing where this is going to damage my brain. No, this is what they need. They don't need me to fall in love with them and be stalking them outside their house at night and exposing them and doing all the stuff. They don't need that. They need that 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 time to fill that void right there. And then boom, I go home and they go on about their life. Uh, when I tell you, you're making me have a lot of different thoughts. That now, okay, so you can although you're physically giving yourself to more than one person, mm -hmm. you can, one of those people, if it's your mate, you can give something that you don't give to the rest of them, although you're doing the exact same act. Exact same act, but if you notice, if you have sex with somebody and you make love to somebody, it's a totally different level well, look of... Here. Look, so I somebody said... Uh, a lost girl six says women do it all the time. You're guarding your feelings. See, women are tricking to the women. <laughs> I say tricky, but they're really just really, really, really multifaceted and amazing and very smart. Mm -hmm. I um, I don't, I don't know if I. You yeah. could be guarding your feelings, but in a escort. Um, the escort room, you are basically put in. So, so say for instance, I, I have 10 clients. It will be exhausting for me to fall in love with all 10 clients, all 10. It will, that will be exhausting. Um, if I, I'm in a relationship and I'm sitting here like literally like, 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 like in a relationship with someone, I have a partner. I'm giving him what I don't give them, and what and what is it? What is it? Is like I say, when I go there, I'm turn it on. I'm at work. That's just like you going to clock in a nine to five job. But, but what if they? You, but what if they really, really attractive and it's exactly what you like? So and and, and I, I've had situations like that before where I was with someone that I is somebody that I really, really like, and I had a partner, and it's just like God dang, oh, this like turns me on. It actually helps me because i can go back and tell my partner hey this is somebody that i really did like you know they turn me on um, I, I had pleasure out of it a lot you know like them or whatever but when i do go to my partner and let him know that or whatever i still know how I stop he froze okay you back you back i had somebody call my phone i need to put my phone on do not do not disturb. Now your volume left. It's gonna take a while for your volume to come back. When you swipe and do do not dis disturb. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you back. Yeah. Okay. So you, All right. you so, go back to your partner and tell them, which is another situation God was talking about. Um, someone about open marriages. Uh huh. Like, that is the that is the missing part that open marriages have that your typical traditional marriages don't mm -hmm. have. There's a mm -hmm. lot. Of conversation about what you want and or what you've done and what you're about to do and mm -hmm. marriage, i don't see any marriage i don't know any marriage that's that open except open marriages the tradition except open marriage yes except open marriage right except, except open marriage and, and and a lot of a lot of people might say okay is a open relationship that you're having with your partner with me i look at it as when you met me, I'm doing this or whatever. Um, I can stop, but if I'm doing this as a full-time job, um, 
and you decide to get in a relationship with me, I look at it as I'm going to tell you this is my job. I'm I, I'm not get I, I ain't gonna say I'm getting not getting pleasure out of it. I'm getting pleasure because I like to you know that's me and cancer being a cancer. But question what, though, no. can can you walk away from this job? and not miss the pleasure that you got from having a plethora of different types and kinds of sex. I can, um, I, and I have before. Oh, have you done I, 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 I just, I just I said, I have before. I can't and I have before because, like I said, when it comes down to my partner, I'm in love with this person. I am basically, I built something with this person so I can walk away from it because, like I said, this is just a job. You can walk away from a job when you don't feel like it no more. You don't like it no more. You want to retire or you're, you're nine to five. It's the same exact way. A lot of people might not look at it that way, but it's the same exact way. I can walk away from it just like you can walk away from your nine to five. Okay. okay. Oh, wow. Okay. I got that. Now we're going to end it with this. I'm going to have to have you back and those two, those two others. And you have to come here to the main studio. Okay. Talk about this. So okay. I got to get you opinion on Don McClurkin. You did you see his clip? I did. I did see his clip. I did. I did. Do you think Don McClurkin is happy or not, or gay or not? Okay, so with Don McClurkin, Don McClurkin is a man that is basically he has on a mask right now he 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 basically had on a mask and he had on a mask for years and when i say that um he had to do and be this way for society the black folks church his career he had to be this way and and that's straight he had to even though people knew about him he had to wear this mask and i feel like when it goes back to when i say society society the black community, and I must keep saying the black community because I have people in the Caucasian community that be like, I don't care, whatever, do what you do, I, that's on you, or whatever. But the black community always deems a put down or think that when they find out a black male is gay, they basically in, in go straight to he's weak. Mm. He, he, He's he's weak. He's he's he, uh, that's something that you're not whoa, supposed to do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We got to do this, and we got. I haven't even thought about that. Do, do yeah. we, in the chat? Do we see a black gay male as weak? What? Now, see, this is why I love having conversations with different types and kinds of people. Two, I'm pulling like three things out of this conversation. Number one, I a sex worker as, as, as a therapy and as a, as a minister to help people come to ident and identify who they are. And now, do we see, is that the reason black men want embrace their full spectrum of their sexuality because they see gay as we? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you see, my they, God. They see a, a black gay man as he's weak. He, he cannot, you know, take care his 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 family. He's he's not like a man. They they don't they, they don't look at him as a man. They look at him as oh, and I, for lack of better words, I don't want to say faggot, sissy. Or they they look at him as weak, like you know, down and what what society what society do not understand is the black gay man is the strongest man in the world because he has to deal with first off being black. First off, first off, being a male, then being black, and then on top of that, he got gay or bisexual on top of him and stuff. He has to go through all of that to understand. I mean, to I'm, give me the way to my mind. I'm I'm trying to wrap my This is a lot of aha. Yeah, the black gay male is he viewed as weak. Then the black gay male is the strongest version of yeah. black masculinity. Yeah. Okay, that's enough. Our conversation. And, and, okay. I can't take no more. <laughs> I, 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 okay. I'm, 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 okay. I'm, 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 I'm,
I'm going to sit with this for a few hours, I promise you. I'm going to write several notes in my phone. And then it's going to come up somewhere else, probably one of my teachings or something in Patreon. Mm -hmm. That's a lot to consider. And, it, and I have to consider it in my work because I am the prophet, the mentor of so many, every, every kind of person we've been discussing here. And mm -hmm. I think I still have biases, um, believe it or not. I think mm -hmm. I knew about the sex work thing. Mm -hmm. And in this conversation, I actually, and, and just the, for full transparency, in our conversation, I have disrespected you so many times and off camera. And you was like, mm -hmm. I'm like, what you doing, hoeing? You know, yeah. you were hoeing. <laughs> I said, I said, but what I like about you is you're so honest. I said, and uh -huh. I love honesty. And so that's the reason why we're able to maintain, maintain relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, especially I remember when, when I see, I because you didn't have an OnlyFans when I first known you. And I said, why mm -hmm. you got an OnlyFans? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm fussy. And I called him all sorts of names. And, uh, and then when you start having sex on your only fan, I'm like, okay, now that's just it. Don't call me. <laughs> but the, your level of honesty is really what make it to where we're able to deal because I don't have to guess uh -huh. nothing about uh -huh. when there's so many pe people um, in my life that I have to guess because people just don't tell, don't tell the truth. Don't tell the truth, now, yeah. Now in this conversation, you have made me think have two things I have to consider and think about because the reality is I can't look at a sex worker as less than. Uh -huh. Just like I with a woman, with a trans person and a gay person. I can't mm -hmm. do, unless I don't I don't care about not being able to be a vessel that God can use to help that person become their best self, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. I can't walk around with that in my heart or in my head. I, I just can't do it. Now, don't, don't get me wrong, you guys. This is nothing that I am going to be, like, I already know for sure. This is nothing, this work, um, I don't look at it as bad, but it's nothing that I want to st stay in forever. Um, a lot of the stuff <laughs> that I'm doing, I'm transitioning. What? What's up? How much money do you make a month? Um, we can talk about that. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> is, 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 it, is it? It's a good it's, 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 a good, it's a good it's bit. It's a good four bit. Four or five figures. Uh, it's a good bit. We can talk about that some other time. Right. But it's, 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 it's a good bit. Just know that. Um, it's, it's something to keep me there. Is it, it, hold on. It's something to keep me there, but I have other avenues that can make up for that. Oh, yeah, I know. I know that. We see that for your and I, DI page and, yeah, and, and your uh, film and all of that. Yeah, I have other avenues that can and that and that's the and that's the whole thing when it comes down to transitioning out, out of that into another level i always i'm always the person where is, i have to put this money back i have to be able to make this money doing something different so that's why i'm still in it and i'm kind of like wheezing my way out of it because of you know weaving um, we, um weaving. Someone asked, can i sell my snatch Bimte. You can they sell it. Listen, they you can nothing, sell your they, L if you want to. It's, 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 it's nothing, something out there for everybody. But there ain't nothing that sells as cool <laughs> and as easy as puss. Yes, sir. And hey, puss. Listen, you can get online. You can get online and put your feet online and guess what? They're going to buy it. They, I'm telling you. My administrator's friend, she does nothing but show her feet and she made 15000 a month on OnlyFans. Yes, right. Right. That's right. So uh, oh, I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so much, and we're gonna get that together. Um, thank you for having and me. Put you, you, we're gonna put you out and have that conversation, and that's probably gonna open up our heads a whole lot. Thank you so much. I, I, I'll holler at you. Okay. Thank you. So, now, I, bruh, that was a conversation. Donna McClurkin. Well, let me show my hands. I have nice hands. <laughs> Donna McClurkin's um, conversation, interview, viral video, is the result of this whole conversation. And this is what I like to do. I like to take these viral stories and not just talk about them, but 
I'm more interested in the conversation that these stories bring up. That's why I say have the conversation, station, absolutely. Um, we got a lot to think about. Don't have to change your beliefs at all. But definitely it should educate you on what is out there and what is happening. And it's not the world you live in. It's not the world that you even have any knowledge about probably, but it is definitely real. Um, and we can, we have to just do our best and understand it. Cause if we don't understand it. We won't be able to connect with each other. And we're probably going to judge each other a certain kind of way. Did y'all, did y'all thought I see a lot of patrons say the combo was good, but that's patrons. Y'all down for all different types and kinds of conversation that can learn from anything. Doesn't necessarily change your belief. This conversation definitely gave me food for thought. Me too. Yeah. I'm going to be thinking about this for a while, especially in the world of sexual therapy. Because there's escort and there's just, for lack of better words, I tell you, I'm biased, holding. But then there's where you can actually help people understand themselves better and work through some sexual dissonance some sexual deviance, some sexual exploration. Mm. That's looking like that. That's, that's looking like that can be a real reality. Somebody said, I came in late. You have to watch the replay. Yeah, I'm going to run it on YouTube and, and Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube and Facebook right now, this has already happened on IG. You need to follow me on IG. That's at symbol Larry Live. Same thing on TikTok because I'm going to start going live on TikTok more as well. And then download my app, Larry Read Live app, in case the next time Facebook and YouTube go out, you still can watch me live um, because that app I own it is mine's with the Z. So we can have the conversation there. Absolutely. Ah, Larry, you are great because of where you are not afraid to go. Classy, sassy, I know that. I'm not afraid. Yeah. Not afraid at all. Okay. See you later. Love you. Bye. Multimedia personality, comedic commentator, songwriter, recording artist, spiritual leader, author, and actor. Larry D. Reed is the founder of the MBN Network, owner of LDR Enterprises based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and the spiritual leader of the Reformation Church of Atlanta. You can catch Larry Reed on the BET Plus original series Kingdom Business and on American Gangsta Trap Queens. Streaming online at BET.plus.